Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue with the Master Budget Part 4. If you haven't looked at the previous three parts, take a look at those. We'll be continuing in Part 4 with the budgeted cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. We will be able to, at the end of this, list components of the Master Budget, compile a budgeted cost of goods manufactured, and then compile the budgeted cost of goods sold. Okay, so let's go through the list again, What we, the order in which we need to see the budget. We're going to do the sales budget first. That's going to be the first thing we need to do in order to do the production budget. Once that has been done, then we can take a look at the direct materials budget, the direct labor budget, and the overhead budget, as well as the capital expenditures we may need for that time period and the selling and administrative budget. Then we can do the cash budget, and then we're going to move on to basically the balance sheet. And we are looking at calculations that will be needed in order for the cost of goods sold section in the balance sheet at this point. So in order to create the, the balance sheet, we need the cost of goods sold. And now in order to have the cost of goods sold for a manufacturing company, we're going to, to work on the cost of goods manufactured. That's what we'll be taking a look at here. Then moving on to the balance sheet and income statement and statement of cash flows are the statements that could be done after that point in time. All right, then we're going to go through the, what we have done so far. These are going to be the budgets that we have done so far. Quick overviews because we will be jumping back to these in order to complete what we are going to do today. Cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. So we started off with the sales budget, which looked like this. We then did the production budget in step two. And then we did step three, raw materials budget. And then we did step four, the direct labor budget. And then we did uh, the factory overhead budget, the selling and expense budget, and the general administrative budgets. We have all those pieces now, and we're going to use those pieces going forward. We then made the cash budget using many of those pieces. Now we're going to move forward from that to go to our major financial statements, uh, the balance sheet, the income statement, the uh, statement of cash flows, and we're going to use the next calculation in order to help us out with the income statement portion, which will be the cost of goods manufactured so that we can use that to get the cost of goods sold so that we could use that on the income statement. All right, so here we have cost of goods manufactured. We're going to start off with raw materials. So the raw materials we're pulling from the balance sheet from the prior period. So this is the prior period's balance sheet. Here's the raw materials that we're going to start with. Beginning raw materials will be, be, of course, the same as the ending raw materials in the prior period. So we can get that from the financials from the prior period. Then we have the raw materials we're going to purchase. How much are we going to buy? We figured that out earlier, and we did that in the raw materials budget. So we did this budget, and we came out to the raw materials purchases here, 611474, and that's what we're going to put right there. So that's going to be the purchases that we will be then making and then we're going to have less the raw materials ending inventory. So this is going to be similar to kind of the cost of goods sold calculation you'd see in a merchandising company. We have the beginning balances plus the purchases minus the ending balance. And here we're going to do this calculation to figure that out. We could go to the raw materials budget. We're jumping back up to step three, raw materials budget. We've got the 4000 That's in units in the ending. And we have the $21 per unit. So if we multiply those together, we would come up with the 84,000. So now we're subtracting out the 84,000. So we're back to the budgeted cost of goods manufacturer where we had the beginning 98,5 plus the purchases 611,474 minus the 84,000 ending balance. And that would give us the direct materials used in the process being the 625,974. Remember, when we talk about the, the manufacturing of inventory, we're talking about direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. This is the calculation we need to go through in order to get the amount of the direct material that it was actually used in this case. Then we're going to take a look at the direct labor. might be a little bit more straightforward. We're going to jump back to uh, step four, which is the direct labor budget. And we'll take the number at the end of the budget for the total of the quarter, 425.99. And that will be the direct labor numbers. Next piece, we're going to have the factory overhead. So now we, of course, have the direct materials. And now we have the direct labor. Next piece is the factory overhead. We're going to have the variable portion and the fixed portion. We're going to jump back to our budget for factory overhead in step five in order to get those two numbers. 
So we have the variable portion here and the fixed portion. So variable portion, fixed portion, 78,111 and 63,000 will give us the 78,111 and 63,000 for the factory overhead. That will give us the total factory overhead of 141,111. So now we have our three components in the outer column, that being the direct materials, the direct labor, and the factory overhead. We will then, of course, add those three up. We're going to add this outer column up. So we're adding the 625,975 plus the 425,99 plus the 141,111, giving us the 187,685. Then we're going to have the working process at the beginning. There was none in this case, but we're going to go through this full calculation just to have it here. Then we got the total work in process, which is, of course, this and the zero, giving us the same number. And then we have the work in process inventory ending, again, is zero in the case in this case here. And that would give us the cost of goods manufactured. So that's going to be our calculation for the cost of goods manufactured. We will then use that number. The whole point of this is to use that number in the cost of goods sold calculation which will be needed on the income statement, the budgeted income statement. All right, so we have the cost of goods sold now. Our familiar formula from, all, from our inventory type companies, the merchandising companies, still starts off with the beginning finished goods inventory. But then instead of purchases, as we would have if we just purchased inventory and sold it, we're going to put in the cost of goods manufactured because in this case we are manufacturing the goods. And therefore we have to do that full calculation that we had just done the cost of goods manufacturing calculation in order to put this in place of where purchases would normally go if we were a merchandising company. And that will give us the cost of goods available for sale. So this would be the amount that would be available for sale if we were to sell everything for that time period. And then we're going to have less the Indian goods inventory. So in a book problem, they would have to give you that number. In real life, we'd have to figure out what was going to be the estimate for the uh, Indian goods, the finished goods inventory. And that would give us the cost of goods sold. So there we have the cost of goods sold number. We can then move on to the final piece, which is the balance sheet and the income statement. Cost of goods sold, of course, being part of the budgeted income statement that we will need for the creation of that statement.